alums and one of the first alums to graduate from Brown coming from China. We want to give you two gifts. One gift is this that Evelyn Hulasher has brought from a very, very far away place. Oh, this is from the Brown Alumni Association. Oh dear, I'm really. Yes, surprised. open it up. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's that? Ooh. <laughs> It's a little brown flavor. Wow. <laughs> brown scarf. Can I open it up oh, for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, the symbol of brown. Oh. Brown is brown and red. The oh, color. Oh, I see. <laughs> so this is something that I can't give you yet. Mm. But in the inside, after today is over, we'll take a picture uh -huh. of this event. All right. And then we'll be able to give you a picture for you to take home uh -huh. and to remember a Let time me show you what this is. Sharing with your brown friends. She will put this in her dorm room. Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, you probably didn't yeah. have one of this when you were at Brown. <laughs> well, I went to U.S. Uh, in 1948. And... Uh, I majored in philosophy as an undergraduate of uh, uh, West South Association University. And I graduated from there in 1943. Uh, um, then I worked for a while, and then I went to uh, I apply for scholarship from Brown and I got one. And, uh, uh, when I signed, I registered, suddenly I think I should change into English literature. <laughs> At the, uh, well, all of a sudden I feel, because uh, I used to love in uh, literature, and before I went there, I wrote some poetry. And anyway, I think I should uh, study literature in the U.S. So I, I went, uh, I registered at the, as a graduate youth university, graduate student uh, in English department. But it's difficult for me to finish my graduate work in two years. So at the end of the two years, I was supposed to leave U.S., <laughs> you know, at that time. Um, or, or, well, and then I think I better apply to be a candidate for PhD in other university so I can finish my thesis in MA. I just suppose mm, that's the only way I do. Otherwise, I, uh, I just have to come back without a degree. So I applied to uh, uh, University of Illinois. <coughs> then I was accepted as a candidate for PhD. But I met my uh, husband there. <laughs> Do you remember you did finish your MA thesis at Brown? Yeah, I, and, I got uh, uh, Professor Liu Yan actually went to Brown a year ago and found her thesis in the <laughs> library. And what was the topic of your thesis? Well, it's about Zhang Dan. Because Zhang Dan was the very, everybody talked about Zhang Dan. So I. Uh, my, my thesis was about Zhang Den, about his metaphysical poetry. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, um, uh, my se I should say, my first love is music, <laughs> it's vocal. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, I came home and I was supposed to do some research work first. Uh, and then, uh, one day, I guess I asked, uh, our secretary is something that um, is not supposed to ask. So they think I have been in abroad too long. <laughs> <laughs> I might not, I shouldn't do any research work. <laughs> uh, uh, and I was supposed to teach English. All right, I, I, then I went to uh, uh, normal university. And anyway, I carry on my, uh, my love for poetry, and I wrote poetry, <laughs> and anyway. Uh, uh, so I published about six, six volumes of poetry, and two 
uh, uh, four volumes of uh, theory. And that's Ten all. Books. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll read it. I read the Chinese. Uh, uh, 流血的令箭和花只要花还在开那被刀切过的令箭在六月的黑夜里吐出暗红的雪花朵带来沙漠的愤怒而这里的心是汉白玉是大理石的龙柱不吸收血迹在玉石的洁白下多少呼嚎多
but I do advise those young Chinese students go over, uh, go abroad, because only when you stay in that land, you feel you have to be independent. You have to trust yourself, not like the way you live here in China. Completely different. That's my experience with my uh, uh, overseas life. <laughs> But I, uh, y y do you remember where you worked and what kind of jobs you had in Providence yeah, in order to make uh, <laughs> enough money to support yourself? Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, tell us a little bit about what huh? kind of jobs you had. What kind of what? What kind of jobs? Oh yeah. Uh, first, of course, Chinese restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> But they treat me very nicely because they only ask me to be a cashier, <laughs> although my math is terrible. <laughs> you didn't But have to wash dishes. No, not this. They treat me as uh, you know. Mm. No, no, that's in, I mean in Chinese restaurant. Right. The next thing is at a jewelry job, jewelry factory. Uh, pier, you know, you have to uh, string pearls, and the quota is very high. Um, uh, every or uh, every half a uh, few uh, twenty minutes, they'll come and check whether you fulfill the quota. If not, please go. <laughs> <laughs> for, the, for the young students here, you may not know that Providence was the heart of the costume jewelry industry <laughs> in the United States. So when Jimmy was at Brown, that cotton, that uh, costume jewelry industry was still uh, vibrant. <clears throat> Now it's no more. Every one of those factories has closed down. Do you know we have no oh, more? Oh, really? No more. They oh. all closed. And they all, you know where they went? No. They all came to China. Oh dear. <laughs> I don't think they can keep China. their rules here. <laughs> they will be driven out of the country right away. Yes. <laughs> uh, since you took voice lesson, I was wondering if you ever tried using your voice to sing any of your poetry. Pardon? I don't if you ever pardon. use your voice to sing any of your poetry. Do you want oh. to ask, have you ever tried to sing No, my own, poetry? not my own poem. Poems, but I did sing others' poems. You know. Maybe would you like to sing a small piece for us? Yeah, I guess yeah, so. Sing a small piece. <coughs> If I could tell you of my devotion, if I could pledge you my heart so true. And my confession would find expression into the music my heart sings to you. <laughs> My question is, uh, you are so healthy, uh, uh, 91 years old. I couldn't, I, can't, I just can't believe that. Can you uh, tell us how you could make it? How <laughs> what is the secret of your longevity? <laughs> yeah, I think poetry and music. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is the uh, well? Well, they always give me. Well, I I'm too busy to think about death <laughs> uh, <laughs> or yes, age or anything that. like that, yeah. you know. So I uh, just enjoy every minute. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> so um, I mean, gone through an interesting period in Chinese history, uh, and so. Uh, You were an intellectual, mm -hmm. as your husband was. Mm -hmm. What was your experience during the Cultural Revolution, mm -hmm. if I might ask? Yeah, you may ask. I think uh, philosophy helps me a lot. Uh, I'll, I'll hold, I'll hold. Uh, 
philosophy helped me a lot. Uh, I think uh, we need, we Chinese need very, very, um, I mean, our college, uh, I mean, humanities are far behind what it should be. Engineering, of course, we, we know everything about natural sciences and so, but social sciences, we know too little. That's the trouble. And I don't know how to express my, uh, my idea to uh, those who are in charge of education. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, I always, you know, uh, when I was, I mean, I, uh, when, once I, I taught one semester uh, in U.S. Uh, and that semester, <clears throat> I brought back the, the latest trend of thinking. That's the theory of deconstruction. <laughs> and I think that's things like that. Now, whenever my, uh, my students or any young people uh, go abroad to, to study, I always tell them, bring back the latest trend of thinking. That's what we need. <laughs> How did you and, survive the Cultural Revolution? Well, if you know things are always changing, you won't stick to anything and, and always, you know, be so... Um, well, you, you watch things going on. That's the way, be a watcher. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, it's very important to know a structure and it um, has to be changed. Um, so deconstruction is the, is the uh, another thing is never f fight, uh, fight against uh, your opposite. I mean, uh, in, uh, in, uh, the, the good word is never think to be, um, uh, uh, how should I put it? Negative? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, I don't know, two Dualism. elements. Dualism. Uh, du du uh, uh, du dualism uh, should not be uh, antagonistic. Uh, if you start to, if two elements uh, always thinking, fight against one another. You will never go ahead with life and the history couldn't go on. That's my, uh, what I learned from theory of deconstruction. <laughs> well, after, after deconstruction, uh -huh. I mean, when, when, and I think China did go through deconstruction, uh -huh. then it has rebuilt, Recon right? Reconstru and reconstructed yeah. into uh, uh -huh something very different. Mm -hmm. It's had a lot of Western influence. Mm -hmm. When you look around today mm -hmm. at the China of 2011, mm -hmm. what's your reaction? Well, I think we are still finding a new way to go on. See, uh, see you, you know the Soviet Russia, now it's only Russia now. I think it's a very wise way to do. When you realize, you you should go back and just try to rethink everything. Because uh, when I was a child, Russia is very um, scholarly country. I think they uh, they should carry on their good tradition and start to think broadly. And uh, you don't have to uh, think ever, uh, there is a final truth. <laughs> Truth is also growing, <laughs> it's always changing. No tradition could stay the same in time. So tradition itself should be explained in different ways as time goes on. So in that case, I don't think tradition are closed. That's one you think you should throw away. <laughs> uh, this one is too old, I'm going to get a new fashion and so forth. Always make the old a new one. <laughs> right, but you still maintain sort of the same cloth, if you will, or the same material. And the question is, mm. I think, you know, the, the cultural revolution mm -hmm. kind of broke off 
a lot of the past under the you know the the thinking that you had to destroy the feudal society yeah, so a lot of yeah, traditions yeah. were cut off whether yeah, they were yeah. jingju or yeah. you know architecture or things things that were essentially yeah. chinese were cut off and then the the reconstruction that happened uh -huh. you know Maybe, did, I, I'm just curious as to your feeling, I agree with you, you, you have to leave the old things behind, but you still maintain sort of an essence. And I'm wondering how you feel that essence is being the Chinese essence, whatever you define that is, how that's being maintained. Anyway, I think there's nothing that's, that can stop. Uh, nothing with life could be stopped. If you think you throw, well, I mean, as far as Chinese language, I think we did something wrong with it. Okay. Uh, uh, because in the Do the May uh, movement or something, uh, they think we should give up. We should give up all the. Uh, we should give up all the traditional culture. That's and and also the Chi old ancient Chinese. That's very wrong. <laughs> and after that, we, uh, uh, you know, uh, actually now we we uh, the young person uh, love new poetry, but they know nothing about classical poetry. That's a big loss, really. But so your uh, own uh, the the selections, and I don't know all of your work. Mm -hmm. But the selections of Chinese poetry that you uh, read mm -hmm. were all by a hua. So you mm -hmm. didn't you did you didn't write in Wu Wei. No, no, no. It's impossible now, uh, because you know I still read. Uh, you know um, I learn all kinds of art of expression, uh, uh, either Chinese or Western. I start, and uh, as far as I my uh, experience. I think American, uh, today, American poetry uh, seems to be more open than British poetry. That's my judgment. Uh, because I think the Americans are very, uh, very active. They, they never stop. <laughs> I think that's a good thing. Uh, and uh, the, I have one, uh, I did. Uh, I mean, I have one volume of translated American poetry, and I, as a Chinese, I regret that we uh, during the May Fourth Movement we uh, deny all ancient Chinese tr culture. That's horrible. I mean, ancient Chinese poetry and everything ancient Chinese. Oh, and I, I think right, you know, some. You, you know Taoism. Taoism is not good, but Lao Tzu is the one for number one philosopher, I should say. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you, you know? Oh, I don't know. Huh? Uh, according to what I want to tell the world, that we have structuralism and deconstruction at the same time. That's very surprising for for the Americans, I think, uh, because you know, way back, Kong Zi is a structuralist, one hundred percent, and Lao Zi is the deconstructionist. When Kong Zi visited Lao Zi, and when he came back, his students asked him, "Oh, how do you like your uh, visit with Lao Zi?" Kong Zi feel very embarrassed because. The first sentence Lao Tzu said is Dao ke dao, fei chang dao. That means you can tell your reason, your uh, belief, your uh, theory, but it can never be the eternal one. It has to go and change and you develop. So that's, I think, Chinese ancient culture. If you go deep enough into it, you'll be surprised. You'll find very contemporary theory. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I think a lot. I would. Uh, I decide to write one article on a comparative study between Lao Tzu and Kong Tzu.
Do you, I mean, it's interesting that you pointed out uh, your feeling about American poetry. And, mm -hmm. Do you think, what do you think is at the root of the fact that Chinese, at least over the past 200 years, have had an incredible affinity with America, more so than with any other country? Not, you know, obviously not because of linguistic reasons, but there seems to be something that Chinese, uh, when they look at America, they see something that they can obtain, or that's interesting. I'm just curious about your your view as to why China has this sort of close affinity with America and with things American. First of all, I have to tell you, uh, I'm not a very typical Chinese scholar <laughs> because. Uh, we are. We have all kinds of scholars. Some uh, or a few years ago, uh, uh, those who teach English in China, they have to teach British accent. That's ridiculous <laughs> to me. <laughs> really, I think we ought to know more. Uh, anyway, according to my experience, I think. Uh, even now, the British scholars might not be enthusiastic about deconstruction. <laughs> but I think the, the American scholars seem to be f free from all kind of you know, restriction. Uh, they, they just go ahead and they use their mind and uh, watch nature and try to find a new discovery. Was it, was it you had the fun, was it what? But, you know, <laughs> here you were, you had a degree in, in uh, China in, sorry? Philosophy. Philosophy. Yeah. But when you got to Brown, mm -hmm. there was some point, there was something inside of you that said, no, I want to study English literature. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. we have that kind of freedom mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that, that it's, it's neat to see that in, you know, the 1940s, mm -hmm. you went through that experience. In the 1970s, mm -hmm. I went through that experience. And in the 80s, oh. and in the 90s, and now, people go. Because I think, uh, you know, Brown in particular, but, you know, a lot of American education mm -hmm. offers that opportunity to make a shift. Mm -hmm. Something that, you know, China and England mm -hmm. share the same thing. When you're in England, and you study your A levels, you know, at like a high school level, that determines your whole future. You go to college and you have to study, you start off in your you know, first year of college and you're not gonna change majors. You're not given that opportunity. Oh, how horrible. It is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it is horrible. Which is a cow cow here. <laughs> yeah. But so, you know, I mean, the whole American system, I think, yeah. offers that opportunity to, to change. Yeah. Oh, now, I, I think there's uh, something I have to say that uh, the first condition is you have to support yourself. Your scholarship couldn't change. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. If you make up your mind to support yourself whenever, um, as long as you can, uh, then do what you think is right. Well, uh, the last, well, I, I wish every, we have all, uh, all kind of nationalities here. I don't know what to say, uh, but as I'm, my own experience is always uh, be faithful to your conscience as an intellectual. Faithful to your conscience. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.